Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and thank you for joining us for Tech Week Live. Um, this is the second event uh, in Tech Week series, this time tackling the subject of charts online. This follows on from the success of our previous session on S100. We had one of these sessions um, this morning, and uh, it was uh, very successful, lots of questions, so um, please keep the questions coming in this afternoon. We're using the GoToWebinar tool, and you will have the opportunity to ask questions at any point by writing them in the pop-up window. We will take some questions throughout the presentation and some at the end. And we will be sharing the details, so the presentation and all the questions and answers with all attendees after the event. Um, we have another session tomorrow, session two, which is a use case, and we are pleased to welcome Carnival Group and their partner Key Technologies to co-host this session with us. Today's session is more a general session on web-based ENCs and chart server basics. So, to give you a bit of insight as to why we decided to host this webinar with the topic Charts Online, um, two reasons really. One, chart server for us is somewhat of an underestimated product uh, in the chart world group and under-celebrated both internally and externally in my opinion. For many of our existing customers and surely for potential customers, it is not clear or not known the full extent of its capabilities and what it can perform and serve. The second part and the main fuel for airing these sessions is that we get asked both as a supplier of chart server and a digital data provider about using charts online. What this really means, use cases, problems, legalities, options available, it's always confusing and it, it shouldn't be but it always is confusing and we get asked many different questions and many of the same questions all the time. So we hope that this session goes some way to answering your queries and how they both come together using chart server and charts online. Before we go any further I should just introduce myself. Um, I am Emma Wise. I have worked with the Chart World Group since 2012 in both Asia and Europe, leading our global sales team. Previously, I worked at the UK Hydrographic Office and am a marine cartographer by trade. My current role is um, a mother to my eight-month-old daughter, and I've just recently come back off of maternity leave. So a slightly different task, but I'm um, still... Uh, excited to be back involved with uh, Chart World and Seven Seas and particularly this Tech Week Live series. Now we have two presenters I'm going to introduce to you today and our colleague Pavel who is helping us on technical support. Um, I'm assuming most of you will know but I shall introduce them anyway. Two presenters, Friedhelm Mogut Kegler. He has just celebrated 20 years with the Chart World group um, and is one of our most treasured experts. He's covered a variety of positions from technical support, research and development, product management, and more recently, one of our solutions directors. Friedhelm has a lifetime of experience in ECTIS and ENC related matters, and is an expert in S57 and S100 related standards and products. So you're in good hands. And um, the other presenter we have is Eric Rotman. He has actually beat Friedhelm. He's been in the Chart World Group for 25 years now and is our WMS chart server expert. He has been involved in ENC production and product management at Seven Seas and Chart World uh, for our ENC tools, our Ectis kernel, and obviously the chart server, and is involved heavily in Ectis and IHO and inland Ectis related standards. So we have two very um, capable experts on hand today to present to you and hopefully answer your questions. So without further ado, uh, we will kick off the session. What we'd like to do is kick off with one of our poll questions to make sure that you're all tuned in and listening. So Pavel, if you'd like to fire up the first poll question, please. So you should be able to see on your screen now the first poll question. Why are you interested in Chart Server? Please, can you vote by selecting one of the following answers? 
um, to learn if it integrates web mapping applications or web GIS for use in a vessel or fleet monitoring system, for use as a chart display engine in a local application or another reason. This just gives us some idea of the audience that we have here and um, the types of questions and directions for our presentation and also tomorrow's session. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So looking at the results, I think you can see them there. The majority are here to see if Chart Server integrates web mapping applications or GIS. So without further ado, I shall hand you over to Friedhelm, who will start the presentation today. Good afternoon, good morning. Um, yeah, Friedhelm Morgat Kegler. Um, yeah, thank you, Emma, for the um, yeah referring to our anniversaries uh, of Eric and uh, myself. And uh, so, yeah, it makes me feel a, a little bit old, but um, well, probably people imagine us sitting here with long beards and gray hair. And but uh, let's have a look at the program here of today our first Tech Week session tomorrow. Emma mentioned it, there will be another session where we will have a, a live demo. But today we will have a, a session where we do um, yeah, about web-based navigational charts. Um, just called up the program. Um, I would like to start talking a little bit about web-based geographic information, uh, geospatial information in general. Then uh, I will do an introduction of our 7Cs WMS uh, chart server and see how it fits into, into web-based geographic information environment. Um, we'll give a little overview about the, the chart server architecture. Um, what we'll do is uh, how do the clients and the chart server, how do they interact, how do we install charts and so on. Uh, we'll look a little bit deeper into the function and features and, and formats. It's, probably something that where Eric will say some words and at the end of this session we will see WSM chart server in action. Um, we will operate it in a WMS client, um, have some, uh, retrieve some, some WMS images or, or maps from chart server using different parameters uh, to give you an overview about the capabilities of this tool. And then we will have some time for a questions and answers session. As Emma already mentioned, we are collecting questions during the session. Uh, if we can answer questions while we are presenting, uh, we will do that. But uh, most of the questions will be answered at the end of the session. And if we don't have enough time, we will follow up uh, with the remaining questions and send you the information and the answers. Web-based geographic information. The internet is a great source for geographic information. We all use web-based maps and geographic online services. So everybody's using Google Earth, Google Maps, OpenStreetMap, OpenCMap, Bing, and so on, and so on. Um, a lot of this information is freely available, and that's uh, really, uh, really great. And it's also platform independent. This means uh, it doesn't matter if we want to use it on a desktop computer, on our smartphone, or our tablet. All we need is a web browser. Many organizations like hydrographic offices, waterway authorities, or other authorities, they collect or generate their own geographic data stored in, in, in databases, um, they analyze it, they use it for purposes such as planning, construction, monitoring, administrative purposes, analysis, mapping, research, and so on and so on. And probably I have uh, forgotten a couple of uh, other important purposes geographic data or geospatial data is used for. Very often the interoperability of data from different sources is the key features. This means in order to answer the questions for specific tasks, it's not enough to look at data sets in isolation, 
to look at them separately. Sometimes we will only find the answer if we compare data sets, if we overlay data sets, if we put them into relation. And this is what um, I'm, I want to say with, with interoperability. So we need tools like GIS system or geodata viewers in order to extract the information from our data. And then by means of these tools, we can analyze the data, we can manage it, we can manip manipulate it, and we can present the geographic information from, that comes from different sources. What we have experienced is that many users of geographic information also have an interest in nautical chart information. They want to use a nautical chart not necessarily for navigation, but as an additional reference for their main activities. And this is where 7C's WMS chart server is a tool uh, that can be used in order to combine geodata and nautical chart information. So I would like to start with a short introduction about what 7C's WMS chart server is. Basically, it is a tool that can be used to include digital nautical charts in applications that use web technology. A chart server is compliant to OGC WMS specification. The OGC, it's the Open Geospatial Consortium, is uh, the members are from basically from the industry and one of their main tasks is to to develop standards in the domain of geoinformation and I would say one focuses standards for web-based services. So the WMS is a commonly used is commonly used in GIS and applications dealing with geodata. And if data or applications use the standard, then its interoperability is very easy to achieve. It more or less comes by itself. Here is an example. So we're looking at the freely available open source JS software QGIS or QJS, uh, some, some call it. And uh, some of the attendees uh, may have worked with QGIS, so you can use it to load local data that's stored on your desktop, and then you can also connect it to web services. And on the second image, we see how the data we've loaded before, maybe from, from, from disk, um, has been um, put in context with the nautical chart that is served by a chart server. Actually, it doesn't matter if the chart server is installed on the same system or if it's installed remotely. Uh, all we need is a connection, basically, to the server and provide some parameters to retrieve the chart image. Um, there are some specific chart server components. First of all, chart server comes with a chart installation tool. And if charts are encrypted, like according to S63, or encrypted according to 7C's internal encryption mechanism, the chart installation tool will also decrypt the charts. Another component is a chart library, basically the storage of the chart data. The chart server includes a chart rendering engine, and that's based on our Actus kernel. This component is responsible for the chart selection. So usually we are not interested in all charts, but just in a particular geographic area. Um, the Actus kernel and the rendering engine make sure that the right charts are selected from the chart library, and then these charts are used to generate a chart image, which for example could be S52 compliant. Then the WSM chart server has an OGC compliant WMS server, which is responsible for the communication between the server and the client that was requesting the image or the chart, the chart image. Uh, 
and this is based on the HTTP um, protocol. HTTP is basically the one of the main protocols within the internet. If we want to interact with chart server we need a WMS client. So the client is the application that sends requests and that usually also presents the return chart images. So the client is operated by the user. There are different potential manifestations or, or, or levels or forms of uh, WMS client. The easiest client is a web browser. That's the simplest form of a WMS client. You could enter a request in the address line of your browser and if the, the server address and the remaining parameters are correct, it would immediately return an image which could be displayed in the chart browser. Um, that's in the in the web browser, sorry. Um, a client, a WMS client could also be a standalone application. The client could be integrated, as we've seen on one of the slides before, in a GIS system. The GIS system could be local or it could be a web-based GIS system. So you see it's a very, very, we are very flexible in this uh, respect. Also, the client could be integrated in chart display applications which are similar to navigation uh, software. In this case, it's not used for primary navigation, of course, but it's, for example, for mission planning or for, for operations on board where we do not have an online connection anyway. So how does a chart server work? First of all, the WMS client sends a request to the server. Then the Actus kernel processes the request and the relevant charts are selected from the chart library. The rendering engine creates a chart image and then WMS server returns the image to the client that initially sent the request. Let's have a look into this request that um, consists of several parameters. And in order to explain this, I would like to hand over to my colleague Eric, uh, who is our real expert of WMS Chart Server. And so, Eric, if you are ready, I would like to ask you to take over. Okay, thank you, Frita. Um, yeah, as you have learned, the, the WMS Chart Server is based on a OGC standard, WMS, which defines how such a request should look like. So, of course, it starts with the address of the server, which is uh, not very uh, special, but after the, the address of the server, the request parameter starts, and the, one of the most important parameters is the layer parameter, with which you define which charts you would like to see. So usually a WMS service offers different chart products or layers, so you have to define what chart product or layer you would like to see. And then of course the, you have to define or your, your viewport defines a so-called bounding box, so this bounding box has also to be defined. Then, of course, the coordinate reference system, which usually is for web-based application uh, pseudo Mercator, Mercator, but could also be different, um, usually uh, that are uh, perpendicular um, reference systems, um, but we also offer some special coordinate reference systems to which we will come later. And finally you have to define also the size of the image uh, which will then be displayed in your client. And all these is transferred via the HTTP protocol or secured HTTP. So I will switch back to free time. 
Thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, so so we see um, WMS uh, request is very complex, but in the end, um, I think it's uh, um, with respect to the to the uh, con, it's, it's pretty logic. Um, and uh, what I would like to to uh, draw your attention now is the architecture that's behind it. So behind our WMS chart server. So what we see here on at the bottom in the middle, that's basically the WMS chart server. Uh, on the left hand side we see chart handler. That is a tool that's uh, responsible for the installation of the charts. It's a separate um, application um, that is operated by the user whenever charts need to be updated or new charts should be installed. We look into the at, uh, at the top in the middle there is a WMS client and this client sits on the customer side. So depending on how complex this client is it could be used to retrieve images from the WMS chart server only or it could retrieve additional images from other servers for example satellite images, weather information or whatever we are interested in. So we have prepared a little animation here. So let's assume we have WMS chart server. We have a server that provides satellite imagery and another server that provides uh, weather information. Then if the client connects to all of these or retrieves images from all of these servers, they can be integrated in one, uh, in one display. So this is the kind of interoperability I was talking um, about a few minutes ago and it's not just about visualizing the data um, we can also retrieve information from the data um, so that we can put everything into context compare data and um, so that in the end it makes sense to answer the questions that are related to the tasks we are just working at. We basically provide two different variants of WMS chart server. Um, this does not necessarily mean uh, we're not I'm not talking about chart server versions but variants and the the difference is that either chart server is managed by the customer which means it's installed um, on a local site of the customer or could also be installed on board of a ship and it's operated and in an internal network. Um, this works onshore and also on board. There is no internet connection required but of course an internal network. The hardware requirements depend on the number of users but this is also the responsibility of the customer in, in this case. And the customer would also be responsible for the administration of the server, for the configuration, updating the server and of course the customer is also responsible for chart and update installation. Um, so we do have customers already that use this kind of, of setup which is um, yeah, very suitable for onboard applications which do not have a permanent internet um, connection. Alternatively we can also provide a hosted service for WMS chart server. So we can run WMS chart server or a couple of instances in the Amazon cloud. Um, the clients that want to access chart server could be usually it's not just one but it's, it's multiple users. Um, they would require a permanent internet connection. The beauty is that the customer is totally relieved from any configuration, any installation work, any administrative tasks. Um, customer does not have to update the server software or the server hardware or whatever. 7C takes care of chart and update installation and the big benefit is that this solution is scalable. So if the number of users that's accessing WMS chart server is growing, it's um, relatively or it's very easy to con configure the setup and to add additional hardware resources if required. Let's have a look at some of the functions, features and 
formats of WMS chart server. And I guess this is something where I would like to hand over to Eric again. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, chart server is supported for different uh, operating systems. Um, of course, the Windows operating systems are supported, both the normal Windows, but also the Windows server. What we have detected is that for, for or more and more customers are using Linux since chart server is, is a server application. So it's a, yeah, very suitable for Linux operating systems. Um, and within the Linux operating systems, yeah, Red Hat and SUSE are those which are mostly used in the military world, whereas Ubuntu is very much used in the civil world and especially for um, or hosting services they provide Ubuntu virtual machines where you can then install chart server so Ubuntu is yeah we have recently added to the supported operating systems okay chart products which are supported by chart server are mainly all products which are based on the S57 standard which is of course uh, ENCs but also inland ENCs, additional military layers and the VPF based products which are from the Americans DNC and VMAP. Then we have still one yeah, paper chart based product which is the Admiralty Rusted Chart Service ARCS which is also supported by Chart Server. Then there is a digital digital terrain elevation data which is more or less a XYZ data which are displayed uh, simply by color points like in the image at the bottom left and uh, some aviation charts which are based on the ARINC 424 uh, format. Okay. Eric, can I just stop um, you there? We just had a question yes. um, come in which is quite timely to ask about BSB format support. Yes, this is not supported. The major reason is that there is no engine for Linux available. So BSB, there is an um, um, official API or SDK for, for the display of BSB, but this is not available for Linux. That is the major reason that we don't or cannot support BSB. Is it likely it will become available at some point or not? I don't think so because, uh, yeah, paper chart based products, I we are very sure that the use of paper chart based products will decrease. Okay, thank you. Okay, the presentation or the, the rendering of chart images is very much based on the IHO S52 standard. Since chart server is using our ACTIS kernel, the display is yeah, similar to the display of an ACTIS. Um, as may, some people of you may know, the, you have in an ACTIS or in an ENC display application, you have quite some uh, settings with which you can configure the chart display. This is not really supported by the WMS standard. It's a quite static display which the um, um, yeah, standard supports. But to in order to support or to allow also all these settings which users are used uh, in an ACTIS or other ENC display systems, we have introduced some um, parameters special parameters which the WMS standard allows. So 
the standard allows to introduce certain parameters, which of course you have to make known to the client. Um, so we did this in order to support, for example, the setting of the safety contour, the dis different display categories. We support the possibility to filter for certain objects, so not only on a layer level, but also on an object level, so you are able to query only for certain objects like uh, aids to navigation in the upper right example. It's possible to rotate the chart image, so for a head-up display, and you are also able to customize the chart presentation with the limitation that a quite profound knowledge of the S52 mechanism is yeah, required for, for a customized chart presentation, but it is possible. Okay, thank you, Eric. But, of course, um, even if this profound knowledge is required, 7 is always happy to assist and to help if customers are interested in uh, such a solution. There are some other features um, that are maybe worth mentioning, um, yeah, as, as I already said, Chart Server comes with the Chart Installation Tool, and actually we already got a question regarding Chart Handler, which is the Chart Installation Tool for Chart Server. Um, if uh, customers use a hosting service, they are not involved in Chart Installation at all, and then um, all they need to do is to decide on what client they want to use and then connect to the chart server. If customers run their own solution, then chart handler um, must be used only during the process of chart installation. So that would be an application on a desktop or on your, on your Linux system, which you start up whenever you want to install chart updates. Um, there are also solutions for automated chart installation, so um, we have scripts um, for this that can also be provided. Um, on top of that, um, Chart Server supports dozens of EPSG coordinate reference systems uh, plus uh, custom projections, uh, Eric already uh, mentioned it, and um, Chart Server is not only used for retrieving images um, from representing nautical chart information, but it also uh, supports feature queries. So within the WMS uh, protocol or the standard, there's also a particular type of request um, which allows users or which allows uh, the client to retrieve feature information. So on the, the right image here, we see that there is this uh, red arrow pointing to a lighthouse and the PIC report here um, shows the light characteristics and this information is directly retrieved from the charts. There's an advanced query function for advanced spatial queries, so um, if we use this, we can extract uh, GeoJSON formatted information also about um, the spatial data of particular features of our chart. So what we also would like to do is to demonstrate chart server in action. So we prepared a few chart server requests and these requests will be sent um, to, a, to a web browser and so there is a link here and if I click it, a web browser should open and um, yes, display the chart image that was, was requested at this very moment. So this is, I'm not sure, probably the default setting of chart server without special parameters. Um, so what we can see if we look at this um, chart display that text information is not shown here, um, soundings are not shown, we don't see um, the lights, they have been uh, switched off here, and there is another example where we use a different parameter set. So if we call send this request 
to the browser, we will see that now we have soundings, we have lights, uh, text information. So this shows it's just a matter of what parameters or what parameter values we send to chart server. So chart server has all the functionality to, to use a full range of display settings, um, basically the same as we know from, from Actis. Um, if we look at this chart image right now, we see there's a, to a certain, quite a bit of clutter. Um, the reason is that the, the scheming, the scheming filter is not used, but of course this is also something chart server supports, and then the request would just have to include the respective uh, parameter. We have some other um, examples. So sometimes you want to merge the chart server image with information from other servers. So this request returns a chart image where the land information is basically masked or, or uh, put uh, represented as an, a transparent way. So this would allow us to merge this chart image with, with maybe an image that was returned from OpenStreetMap, for example, or a satellite image, and then the land information would be represented by, by those areas of the satellite image, whereas everything that's uh, representing water or representing depth information uh, is retrieved from the WMS chart server. Another example where all we request from chart server are the aids to navigation. So the background is, is transparent, so we could use this image in our uh, advanced client application and merge it with other images from other servers. But what we do here is just in a, in a um, web browser, uh, we send a request to chart server and parameters have been specified to retrieve aids to navigations only. So we have some more examples. Um, this set of examples um, show that chart server supports different products, not only ENCs. So now chart server returns an inland ENC. Uh, we can recognize this from this typical notice marks that are not used in maritime ENCs but uh, for inland ENCs only. Uh, another example would be AML. So I guess this is AML1. I think that's a demo data set, wild mixture of different features here. Uh, AML3 is supported as well, so for those that are familiar with AML, they will probably see the differences in the type of features and the, and the display here. And then there's a detailed layer here. I don't know, Eric, uh, can you say some words to the other um, products like uh, the other examples? Yes, I can. So, yeah, DTED is a digital terrain elevation model, so just X, Y, Z in a certain distance, uh, and they are, each point is represented by a color. So DTED is only covering land areas and very much used in yeah, combat management systems together with ENCs and together also with um, R-Ring and the example, yes. This one is a yeah, typical chart display in a combat management system where you have combined ENCs, uh, detailed information about the land surface and also the aviation information. Yes, and this is one of the American VPF-based products. It's a VMAP, also covering only the land areas. When we're talking about these different features and examples, um, one of the questions that we've had come in is, does Chart Server provide complete layers of data, 
data or can um, we filter layers like by dangers or anchorage areas or um, different safety contour settings for example um, so we just quite couldn't sorry. agree who was uh, about to answer <laughs> the question so I will again hand over to Eric um, so give me a second yes so you you always have to define a layer and within one layer you can filter for certain objects so it's quite scalable the filtering so um, yeah I, I don't know if that answered the question See yeah. so yeah, I think so, unless uh, Freetown has anything else to add. But while we're talking about the, the types of data, uh, another question that came in, which I think is good to answer at this point, uh, maybe Freetown you can answer this one, is uh, what about S100 data, S101, S102 data layers? Is this supported by Chart Server? And uh, this version of Chart Server does not directly um, support. Um, S100 yet since the reason is that the standards are still um, progressing and um, also um, we just had a technical problem here this is just why I'm a little bit reluctant but now we've solved it now um, our approach is that that all um, S100 support we first um, implement in our uh, Actis kernel and um, then all our applications that are based on the, uh, uh, on the Nautilus kernel will then uh, follow. Uh, currently the well edition one of the S101 standard uh, has been or has been released over a year ago but it's still in a kind of uh, test phase. There are tests, a lot of tests going on with S102 data and um, so we are uh, already working on this but this hasn't migrated into chart server yet but we can we'll have at the end an example how uh, chart server shows uh, some s111 um, data which is for currents of course in the framework of a, of a project with, with a partner um, we can use um, services that already serve um, yeah to a certain extent s100 products like currents or grid with symmetry. Uh, but at the end we will have um, a slide showing the integration of S111 in chart server. But okay, as I said, thank you. standards, uh, work on the standards still needs to go on, but since we are involved we are, yeah, we are confident that um, this will be available on time. If there are no other questions I would just continue with our examples. Emma, is that, would that be okay? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, I said uh, before that chart server not only returns images, it can also um, retrieve information uh, from our chart features and there's a particular request um, that yeah, uh, basically generates a kind of pick report. What we're looking at here is the original XML file that uh, chart server returns in an OGC compliant form. And then, as I said, we are using this data just in the, in the web browser. If we use a proper client, then this pick report would be presented nicely. We will have some examples in, in a minute. So if we use a web client, then we see that rather than sending requests um, via the address line of a browser, which is pretty static, all of a sudden if we use a client like this, this is a sample client that comes with the chart server installation, we can see that we can now just use our mouse to, to pan, to zoom, and what's happening um, on every action I'm executing here, this client sends a request to chart server. Every time I move the chart image, the area of interest is, uh, has changed. 
This information is put into a request together with the image size and the set of parameters relevant for this particular uh, chart image. So if I click here, I can also retrieve object information. So, so what we see now is that this XML file that's originally returned is picked up by the client and now presented in a more user-friendly, human-readable format. This client also allows me to, to manipulate the chart settings. Uh, during our session this morning, there was a question if we can influence the safety contour. Currently, the safety contour is set to 10 meter. I can just go and reduce it to, let's say, uh, wrong direction, to reduce it to 5 meter. And the shallow contour can be changed as well. Deep contour, I will set to 10 meter and the safety depth maybe also to 5 meter. So depending on how the client or the functionality of the client is implemented, I now have to say apply to update the chart image. And then you see that the safety contour has changed and um, also the shallow contour and the deep contour. If I may. Um, Eric, somebody has asked the question, is there any issues related to the use of front-end libraries like React.js or frameworks like Angular um, presenting the charts from WMS Chart Server? Mm, no, there, there are no issues. Um, it's very common if you develop a web-based application to make use of such toolkits like OpenLayers or Leaflet. Um, but React is more a programming language, which, by the way, we also use internally to develop uh, a client, a web-based client. But the communication with WMS service uh, usually is done by such toolkits like OpenLayers or Leaflet. Okay, thank you, Eric. I guess we've seen some of the uh, examples and um, the, also the, the dynamics and, and the power if we use a proper uh, web client or a client that yeah allows us to interact with um, chart server. So the client we were looking at uh, a minute ago just had a few settings uh, we can use to influence the chart image but of course um, chart service supports uh, many more and Eric uh, mentioned it already that we have introduced extensions um, to the WMS parameter set That's something the standard allows us to do so so that we have even more flexibility but um, yeah I guess we are almost at the end of our presentation here um, short summary so we think that Web-based geodata processing is yeah, very powerful. Our solution that fits into such an environment is um, WMS Chart Server. It smoothly integrates navigational charts in such kind of applications that are based on web technology. And we also can provide different um, models when it comes to the provision of the charts. So if, if customers prefer to have their own installation, they can, of course, um, get charts from, from Chartworld uh, 7Cs, uh, manage the charts, install the charts um, in their chart server environment. But we can also offer a hosting services where customers just need to connect to the service and focus on, on development of a client or using an existing client and uh, Seven Cs will take over the um, yeah all the administrative work, configuration, chart updates, and so on. And also, this slide shows an um, an S one eleven data set as an overlay uh, on the electronic chart. So you can see that we are already working on S one hundred related um, solutions. And for me, this would be the point to say, okay. Um, we should have a look at some of the questions. 
So Emma, question to you. Have you collected some more interesting questions? And yep. then Eric or myself uh, can try to answer them. Yep, for the last sort of 10 minutes, I've got a couple of questions and we've got one more poll for everybody to participate in. Um, while we're talking about various chart provision models, uh, one question we've had is, can we use official ENCs within chart server? And related to that, if 7Cs are hosting chart server um, as opposed to it being a hosted service, is there a difference in the chart provision models um, between the different hosting scenarios? Yeah, I can try to answer this question. If we use official ENCs in chart server, there is a, a limitation with, with respect to the licensing, uh, which in this case is the same as for Actis. So it's limited to five users in an, I would say, in a, in a closed environment like on board a ship. So the only um, solution we provide for this or the, the only use case is that a chart server is used on board of a ship where five users have access. So in this case, it's not that much the web-based application. It is an onboard application that's using web technology as an alternative to develop, uh, implementing an Actis kernel. If we talk about a real web-based environment where we have uh, many more users, then we are not supposed to uh, use official ENCs, of course. You think that? I think that answers the question, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, with official ENCs, obviously they can be used to a degree, but they are not designed to be used in the way that people want to use them within uh, chart server applications, um, and the charts then become expensive. Um, so that is a prohibiting factor. Um, alongside the, the legalities around the usage with official ENCs. Um, okay, I have another question here, and I have to confess I'm not entirely sure what it means, but I'm hoping Eric and Friedhelm, one of you, can uh, <laughs> enlighten me. Can the WMS chart server run as a Docker or container to simplify management and raise availability, and will 7Cs provide such container? Yeah, uh, Eric here. Um, although we haven't run tests in our uh, office yet with running WMS chart server in a container, we know from customers that it works and we will run a project, research and development project this year, which deals exactly with this topic. Um, this uh, yeah, running our software, not only WMS chart server, but also other software in a container environment. So um, it's officially not supported yet, but we are working on that. Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, we have a few more questions, but we're running out of time. So I think right now I'd like to go to the final poll question, Pavel. Um, again, if you can participate in the poll, it helps us to um, direct these web sessions and also direct the questions and answers better when we send them to you afterwards. So the final poll, which organization um, do you or your, uh, sorry, which following group do you or your organization belong? Um, an authority, so hydrographic office, waterway authority, offshore, uh, shipping company, vessel monitoring or environmental monitoring protection research or maybe something else but please please vote and this is the result great thank you everybody well thank you for tuning in today we hope it's been useful if we've missed anything that you wanted to hear or you wanted answering please join tomorrow's session that might also cover it um, but failing that do contact us and uh, we'd be happy to share the information with you as I mentioned at the beginning, we will be sharing the questions and answers with the attendees as well as the presentation here. So thank you again for your time and thank you for joining us. Um, we hope we'll see some of you again tomorrow uh, for the session with Carnival and Key Technologies showing how Chart Server uh, can be used.
one final thank you to our presenters, Friedhelm and uh, Eric, and also to Pavel for the technical support today. Yeah, thank you, Emma, uh, for the nice words and for guiding us through the uh, entire session. Also, thanks to the audience for uh, your interest in, in our session here. And so I say goodbye, and maybe you tune in tomorrow as well. Goodbye and see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.